our two favorite corporations are back at it again. Red Hat and Microsoft have announced a interesting collaboration as RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux is going to become a supported distribution on Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's talk about it. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is a commercial open source Linux distribution developed by Red Hat for the commercial market. And while it's a great commercial Linux distribution for enterprise, featuring things like stability, security, and support features. Again, it's highly focused on enterprise servers, such as web servers, database servers, cloud infrastructure, and so on and so forth. So while it's a great enterprise solution, there are definitely some frustrations that people have had over Red Hat in the past, which we're gonna talk about. But first, let's talk about bringing Red Hat Enterprise Linux to the Windows subsystem for Linux. For those of you who've used RHEL in the past, you're gonna be excited to be able to use it on Windows. If you use Windows, as they say here, the hybrid cloud is the innovative driver. This means that what's pushing them to actually make this step with Microsoft is the fact that the hybrid cloud is becoming more and more useful for enterprise. That way they want to work together to bring RHEL to Windows. Whether pushing the enterprise technology envelope with breakthroughs like generative AI, Gen AI, or simply making traditional IT more efficient and responsive through application modernization. Underpinning successful hybrid cloud strategies is choice of architecture of cloud provider and a technology stack. So why they are so pleased to announce Red Hat Enterprise Linux on WSL. In their words, it's a significant move for enterprise IT for developers who need to build Linux apps on Windows systems, but then deploy on a RHEL environment being able to use the same RHEL via WSL as they would for production can be a significant time and resource saver. This is the same RHEL that powers some of the world's largest enterprises, the same RHEL that fuels Fortune 500 companies, and the same RHEL driving supercomputing advancements. And it is the same RHEL that last year gave us an announcement that they would limit access to RHEL source code to only paying customers ceasing public availability. This sparked significant backlash with the open source community and was perceived to kind of contradict open source principles. So that hindered other distributions like Rocky Linux, Alma Linux, and also Red Hat's decision to shift CentOS from a downstream clone of RHEL in 2020 to an upstream developmental branch called CentOS Stream was also a big deal and caused a lot of dissatisfaction across the Linux community and the open source community. That's why we have these RHEL clones like Alma Linux and Rocky Linux to fill that void. Anyways, with Red Hat Enterprise Linux becoming an official supported distribution on WSL, that's definitely going to help simplify workflows for enterprise level people and for those of us who just want to kind of mess around. But it also brings up some concerns that I'm going to talk about in a moment. But let's continue on over to the Microsoft side of things. Why don't we hear for them as well? Getting started with RHEL on WSL. Before I do, I want to talk about what it looked like before in order to actually install RHEL on WSL. This is what they're trying to get away from or actually trying to fix. The launch of RHEL on WSL was possible in the past. You just had to go through and install quite a bit of things through the command line. Versus like Ubuntu, you could pretty much just go to the Windows Store, simply click on install Ubuntu after you've enabled WSL on your system, and that's it, it pretty much ran. Anyways, we can go through the code snippets here that require you to actually register and attach and deploy a sample app on RHEL with WSL. Anyways, not the easiest thing, but eventually you would get a web page that you can use on RHEL, and you'd actually have the system running in the background. The whole idea here is to just make that process easier. Now I did talk about some of the negatives here, but we also have positives of course from RHEL in the past as they've actively contributed to a lot of open source projects, including things like GNOME and KVM, the kernel based virtual machine stack. They've created open source communities and occasionally done educational initiatives, investing in educational programs to train IT professionals, helping move over a lot of the enterprise level platforms onto Linux, which is a great thing because the more we have enterprise in Linux, the more we're going to get actual meaningful contribution to the overall Linux system. But from the Microsoft side of things, what's new in the Windows subsystem for Linux in November 2024? Well, first off, Red Hat is becoming an official WSL distro. They call it Red Hat, but it should be RHEL. Doesn't matter. And how are they going to do this? Well, they're going to make a new tar-based WSL distro architecture, which helps you enable and create a distribution of WSL. As it says here, although you can run any Linux distro on WSL, being an official distro makes it easier for WSL users to install and discover it with actions like WSL list online and WSL install. 
We're excited to announce that Red Hat will soon be delivering a Red Hat Enterprise Linux WSL distro image in the coming months and will be shipped with new tar-based WSL distro architecture. So we get a new architecture as well that's going to be implemented called the new tar-based WSL distro architecture. What this is, it just enables the user to easily create the distribution like RHEL on WSL by writing Windows specific code. It just creates a little bit more flexibility. And here it talks about some of those benefits that WSL users will get. Easily automate WSL distro set it up by the end user by being able to run commands before the user creation and setup. Get clear error messages set the WSL name and install location, and apparently more potential improvements in the future. Well, that's not much to be honest, but it is what it is. And then finally, the new WSL Zero Trust feature updates, Intune integration and Entra ID integration. What these are are enhances in security by allowing IT administrators to, to enforce compliance and manage WSL usage within organizations. And finally, the Microsoft Entra ID integration uh, is going to provide a private preview of, of secure token-based access to enterprise resources directly within WSL. So it seems like they're trying to enterprise WSL more and more. And especially with this announcement that Red Hat Enterprise Linux is going to be officially available and supported on WSL. Why is this important? Well, the enterprise focus here is seemingly a strategy by Microsoft to get more people probably using its cloud environment. Whether or not we care to think about it, Azure is a massive cloud platform and the three major ones, GCP, Azure, and AWS cloud services are definitely competing against each other. So any type of enterprise focus here to make it more appealing to enterprise users is going to be a win for, well, technically both sides. With that same thought, this also streamlines the process for Linux environments on Windows, specifically for the enterprise edition users, giving more accessibility to these types of tools on Microsoft Windows is going to boost up both parties. Quite honestly, the security enhancements, I don't really care about. I'm sure enterprise users do. If you do, comment below. And if you haven't already smashed that like button, of course, the new architecture improvements cater both to new and advanced users, helping bridge the workflow between Windows and Linux. And finally, I want to talk about the overall community sentiment here about this announcement where Red Hat and Microsoft are teaming up to bring RHEL to WSL. It's a bit mixed. There are positive and negatives, of course. Some Linux community members are seeing the practical benefits here and support the initiative. They like the collaboration because it's going to not only make things more accessible, particularly for IT admins, developers, and enterprise users who work on mixed Windows Linux environments, but they seem this as a practical move in order to align using enterprise Linux on desktops. We all know that Microsoft Windows is installed on almost every desktop here in the world, so in order to use corporate servers running RHEL, this all makes sense, and to maintain them. But there's also some negative sentiments. Well, a lot of us distrust Microsoft. Many people think this is just a long-standing strategy in order to control and co-opt Linux for its own benefits. We've seen this many, many times and fears of the embrace, extend, extinguish strategies. And there are definitely people questioning the Red Hat's move and what kind of alignment or strategy do they have with Microsoft to shift towards more corporate strategies, which seem at odds with open source ideals. Well, only time will tell what Red Hat and Microsoft's motives are actually going to be. While I take the stance that this is neither good nor bad, but hopefully will benefit the proper parties. In a synopsis here, while the collaboration here is a significant step forward for enterprise cloud computing development environments, while the collaboration is a significant step forward, at least for enterprise level hybrid cloud development, it definitely comes in with its own trade-offs that may affect the broader Linux community and open source communities. I think the integration will strengthen Linux's presence on Windows environments, but may water down the Linux experience, especially for enterprise users and developers. We'll see how the benefits of this new strategy and announcement will work out. Will it outweigh the negatives? Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Catch me in a great community on Discord. If you haven't already, subscribe below if you enjoy programming and Linux, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.